from the Austin Nature and Science Center. Thanks for joining me for another Wild Wednesday video. Today we're going to talk about a really interesting group of primates. What kind of animal do you think about when you hear the word primate? Maybe your first thought is a monkey like this capuchin. Did you know that primates also include a group called prosimians? And those include animals like lemurs and the slow loris. There are also apes that are a part of this group. There are the lesser apes like gibbons, and there are the great apes, and chimpanzees are one example of those. The great apes are the group we're going to focus on today. Members of this group include gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans, and humans. That's right, we were part of the great ape group. However, humans are pretty unique, so for the rest of this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about our furrier relatives. We're going to learn a little bit about what these great apes have in common with each other before we learn about the specific groups. All great apes are large, intelligent, and tailless primates. An unfortunate characteristic that they share is that they're all endangered species. But something that's more exciting is that they show signs of self-awareness because they can recognize themselves in a mirror, which is a trait that doesn't show up in humans until they're about two years old. They can also use language when taught by humans that humans can understand. So Coco the gorilla had about a thousand signs that she used with her caretaker. Now we're gonna focus on our closest living relatives, chimpanzees and bonobos. You can probably guess by looking at them that they're really close relatives of each other. And in fact, let me point out that the picture above me, those are chimpanzees and the other photo is of bonobo. They look so similar because it was probably geographic isolation or a physical separation that caused us to have two different species now. If we look at a map of their range, you can see all of the spaces colored yellow, purple, green, and blue, that's all chimpanzee range, and the area colored red, that is bonobo range. So there's something that happened a long time ago that gives us a clue as to how that population was separated, and that was the formation of the Congo River. So now there's a physical barrier that separated what is now the bonobo population from the rest of chimpanzees for a long time. Chimpanzees and bonobos do have some significant differences. The species that we call chimpanzees is actually made up of four subspecies. All of those subspecies live in groups up to about 150 members. They're a patriarchal system, which means that the alpha animals, or the ones who are in charge, are males. Chimps who live in troops together show fierce loyalty for one another and will work together to get their food and also to keep the other members safe. They'll hunt for smaller mammals whenever they have the chance, but they also eat plant material. Whenever there is friction between members of a group, or especially if there are members from an outside group, they're usually solved with physical violence. Even with that, the life expectancy for these animals in the wild is between 40 and 50 years. And once a baby chimpanzee is born, it'll stay with its mother through all of its infancy, all of its adolescence, and even into adulthood in some cases. So they have a very strong bond within their groups. Bonobos also have really strong bonds within their groups, but their alphas or leaders are actually females, making them a matriarchal society. Their troops are also usually a little smaller, comprised of about a hundred individuals. Bonobos are also omnivores, meaning they eat both plant and animal material. Something unique about them compared to chimps is that they're considered to be quite a bit less aggressive, and whenever they have problems, they tend to solve them without the use of violence. Much like chimpanzees though, infants will stick to their mothers for much of their lives, and when the time comes, mothers might even help their sons find a mate. The lifespan of these animals in captivity is about 40 years, but because of a lot of factors negatively affecting their wild populations, their wild lifespan is unknown. Now let's think about the largest of the great apes, the gorillas. Not only are they the largest of the great apes, they're also the largest living primates. And maybe surprisingly, their diet consists mostly of plant material. I bet they have to eat a lot of plants to feel full. There are two species of gorilla. You can see the eastern gorillas live in the range that's colored green and blue, and the western gorillas live in the range colored red and orange. They live along a wide range of elevations, with some living in lowlands and some living higher up in the mountains. 
These apes live in smaller troops than the first two species we talked about. They have a troop with one dominant male called a silverback, who's at least 12 years old because that's when the silver on their back develops. And the rest of the troop is the females that he mates with and their offspring. These apes have a lifespan between 35 and 40 years, but the oldest recording gorilla died at 60 years old, which is pretty amazing. The last group we're gonna talk about today is the orangutans. There are three species, the Bornean, Sumatran, and Tapanuli orangutans. And the name orangutan itself actually comes from the Malay words for forest and person. This says to me that their closeness to people has been recognized for a long time. These apes don't actually share the same range as the other animals we've looked at so far. Instead of living in Africa, these live in Malaysia and Indonesia. These are also the most arboreal of the great apes, which means they spend the most time in the trees. And you can see it in their body shape because they have long arms and shorter legs. They also tend to eat fruit as the biggest part of their diet, which also is a clue to the whole tree thing. These are also the most solitary of the great apes with the strongest bonds existing between mothers and their direct infants. Once the babies have made it to 11 years old, they'll branch off and go form their own ranges. This group also has pretty significant sexual dimorphism, which just means that the adult males and adult females can easily be told apart. Males have those really pronounced flanges around their face, which gives them a super oval shaped face that's really different from the female's face. These apes can live to be about 30 years in both captivity and in the wild, and I just had to include this picture of the babies because I think orangutan babies are so stinking cute. I hope you enjoyed learning about our closest living relatives today. Learning about these awesome apes can help shine a light on the history of our own species past. Which ape was your favorite? You can let us know in the comments below. My favorite are bonobos. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Head over to our Facebook page to see more awesome daily videos posted.